everybody. I'd like to welcome you to Connect Preneur. Thank you for joining us. We're now in our 11th year. And uh, Connect Preneur, for those of you who are not familiar with us, we are a global community of over 25,000 investors, CEOs, entrepreneurs, business leaders, and professional service providers from around the world. This is our 70th Connect Preneur event overall over the last 10 years and our 26th virtual Connectpreneur rocket pitch since the pandemic started two years ago. We are now the world's largest monthly investor pitch event. We've had over 800 presenting companies and our Connectpreneur investor network now totals over 3,000 accredited private investors, angels, and family offices who are interested in investing in awesome deals that they can meet through the Connectpreneur community and our events. So 10 years ago, when we started Connectpreneur, we started this as a forum for business leaders, entrepreneurs, and investors to connect and engage and to learn and to be inspired to celebrate innovation and entrepreneurship. And our intent is to help our community members find capital, find awesome deals, to find partners or customers, and to meet and engage with great business leaders. And our events are all about connecting. And this is why we do our events as meetings where every attendee can see every other attendee and private chat with every other attendee rather than a webinar where people can't see each other or network with each other. Um, so a couple quick things about our event today. Our, after our final presenter, we have 10 presenters. After our final presenter, we'll open up the breakout rooms. So we will have 10 breakout rooms, each one hosted by one of our presenters. And you'll be able to enter and leave whichever breakout room you like. So please do visit with as many presenting companies that you might have an interest in investing in or learning more about. Purpose of the breakout rooms is for our presenting companies to go deeper with interested investors and partners. So we don't offer Q&A after the pitch, but we do allow our attendees to go and ask directly the questions to presenting companies in their own, in their own breakout rooms. And just remember that the breakout rooms are hosted by the presenting company. It's for them. So please, um, you know, be respectful and conduct yourselves accordingly. Um, also, if you could be respectful and tactful when using the group chat, you can post your LinkedIn and other connect, uh, contact information and introductions into the group chat, but please don't overload the chat. As you can see, we've got already several dozen, if not hundreds of chats in there. Um, so unless you're a presenting company, please don't post more than two or three times. And our presenters, they will be posting links to their decks and to their executive summaries in the group chat. And they'll also be posting links to registration for follow-on investor meetings over the next few weeks that they will be hosting on their own. So be sure to look out for that. Um, so really important note regarding the group chat, um, we recommend that you download your chat transcript before you leave the meeting or even before you go into the breakout rooms. That, that way you can read through the chat history later. And how you download your chat transcript is you click on the chat icon on the bottom of the toolbar and you'll see a little square, a rounded square with three dots. So click on that icon and hit save. And your chat transcript will be saved and you can review and follow up on your messages later. So um, regarding polling, we will be polling our investors a few times this morning. And please remember that the polls, the investor polls are for our investors only. And these are confidential. We don't share poll results uh, with the audience. We're just going to pass the information on to our presenting company. So they'll follow up with the investors. And um, if you're an investor, please indicate which companies you're interested in learning more about, and we will make sure you're connected with the presenters. Um, we will post the latest program book link into the chat box. We have all 10 executive summaries, plus information on our awesome sponsors, who I will be naming in a few minutes, as well as a list of all the attendees who have registered. So Sky, if you could kindly put the link to the program book in the chat box, that'd be awesome. Our sponsors make our events possible. So please be sure to indicate a need when we put up the polls. And we'll do the sponsor poll right before the rocket pitch session and one immediately afterwards for, for those who might be joining late. So thank you again for your participation. Um, you can see the list of our sponsors on the back cover of the program book along with their, their company information and contact bios inside the program book. So um, you know, I'll, I'll shout them out in a couple of minutes. So as far as today's rundown, we have 10 total presenters. Each presentation will be about four minutes with no Q&A. So please reserve your questions for the breakout rooms. And if you are captivated, please be sure to indicate this on, on the investor poll and also stop by the breakout room of the presenters. The first five 
Presenters will be introduced by Larry Bart of Next, powered by Shulman Rogers, and the next five will be introduced by Andy Tucker of Nelson Mullins. And remember, again, we will be doing the investor polls for investors only after the third, seventh, and final presenter. So a couple other program notes, please mark your calendar for our next virtual rocket pitch event, March 31st. We will put the link to register in the chat box. And please let Skyler, who is our community manager, know if you're interested in sponsoring, exhibiting, or presenting. And then finally, I'd like to invite all of you to apply to the ninth Ninth Annual Mid-Atlantic Innovation Awards program to be held in May. It's hosted by the Northern Virginia Chamber of Commerce. This amazing program uh, recognizes innovation of all kinds in all organizations. And Connectpreneur is pleased and proud to be co-organizing this event with the Northern Virginia Chamber for the fourth consecutive year. So who is eligible to apply? Basically, anyone who's doing creative and innovative things in the Mid-Atlantic. And that includes startups, large companies, government agencies, nonprofits, educational institutions, if you're doing something cool and innovative, and it doesn't have to be technology, um, you can apply. So if you're doing something special, for example, in HR or manufacturing or service delivery, um, then we want to hear about it. And the applications are due on March 25th, and it's so easy to apply. All you got to do is submit a two-minute video detailing your innovation, and uh, the website for this is go to the Chamber's website, www.novachamber.org and you'll find the event page. And Sky, if you can also put the link to apply directly into the chat box so anyone who's interested in applying, they'll have the direct link uh, there. So, okay, with that, we can start the program. Um, first off, I'd like to welcome Pat Sheridan, who is the co-founder and managing partner of Modus Create, one of our awesome sponsors. Modus Create is one of the world's leading digital transformation companies. They have global agile development teams and high-level consulting engagements. And they help some of the world's top brands, as well as early stage companies with successful software development, mobility, and other digital transformation services. And Modus has been, um, personal note, Modus has been instrumental in the success of several Connectpreneur presenting company alumni teams, including three companies that I'm personally involved in as an investor and board member. Um, I can tell you the Modus team is top drawer. We highly recommend them. So if you're looking to design, develop, and ship awesome product on time and on budget, which is not the easiest thing to do. Modus is definitely the right choice to help you get there. Um, Pat also just completed an eight-figure funding round with a major PE firm to continue their global expansion. So congratulations, Pat, on that. And uh, thank you so much for your support and welcome. Hey, thanks, Tien. Um, you didn't really leave me anything to say, which is awesome. <laughs> Takes me off the hook. I uh, just, you know, excited to see the companies present today. And as Tien mentioned, a lot of our model is really around helping growth stage companies really scale with a turnkey partner that can cover everything from product strategy and growth, user experience, research, design, um, platform engineering, DevOps, and security. And I think just on that last note, you know, monitoring the situation, uh, unfortunately, it's happening, you know, this week in Ukraine. And uh, for folks that have team members there, um, or just concerned in general on, a, on the security issue, I'll, I'll just post my uh, LinkedIn URL into the chat. We've kind of put a hot list of things that I think any tech player, or folks with a distributed team should be doing just to add some additional hardening uh, to their infrastructure and IP. So with that said, best luck to the presenters today. I look forward to seeing the pitches. Tien? Great. Thank you so much, Pat. We really appreciate all you're doing for our community. So now I'd like to put up our first poll, and this is a all for our awesome sponsors. They make our events possible. So, Sky, if you can put that poll up, that'd be great. And please respond if you have any interest in their services. I'd like to name them by name. Um, so we have Next, powered by Shulman Rogers. We have First Financial Group, Modus Create. Thank you, Pat. Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation, Association for Enterprise Growth, Stella Pop, Nelson Mullins, Northern Virginia Chamber, Startup Grind, Ryan and Wetmore, George Mason University, Mason Enterprise Institute, SunTrust Bank, Karetsu Forum, Permissidai, Enterprise Transformation Solutions, the Angels and Life Sciences Investors, New Jersey Angels, uh, Shulman Rogers, Refraction, and I'm right here in Refraction where we have our studios, and uh, Esther Lee, who's our CEO, is offering two months free for anyone who wants to come and be part of this awesome community. It's the top co-working and uh, innovation community here in the Washington, D.C. region. So thanks, Esther. 
Um, I'd like to thank Founder Institute, Georgetown University Entrepreneurship, the Baltimore Angels, SAPA, FITSE, Maryland Tech Council, the Dingman Center for Entrepreneurship at the University of Maryland, Institute for Excellence in Sales, Center for Advancing Innovation, the MIT Alumni Angels of Washington, D.C., National Association of Business Owners and Entrepreneurs, U.S. International Development Center, COBE, the annual Wharton D.C. Summit, and Monty Jade Greater Washington Science and Technology Association. Thank you guys so much, and thank you, attendees, for um, patronizing our uh, wonderful sponsors. So uh, with that, we can um, get the show started. I'd like to first uh, introduce Larry Bard, who's a uh, partner at Next, powered by Shulman Rogers. Um, thank you so much, Larry, for your for Next and Shulman Rogers' support of our program over the years. You guys have been really loyal sponsors. We love you guys. And um, Larry's company offers fixed price uh, packages for mostly early stage companies, and it's a very unique delivery model. But I'll let Larry um, explain a little bit about that and introduce himself, and he will do our first five companies. Larry, welcome, and thank you so much for your support of Connectpreneur and our companies. Thanks very much, Tien. We'd like to thank you and the Connectpreneur team for today's event. We are very honored to be a longtime sponsor and supporter of Connectpreneur. Congratulations on the growth of Connectpreneur into the largest global event connecting entrepreneurs, investors, and other members of the startup ecosystem. Um, as Tien mentioned, I'm co-chair of the uh, next platform here, powered by Shulman Rogers, we're an innovative new model for the delivery of legal services from launch through growth and exit, and have been designed from an entrepreneur's perspective. Next offers predictable, reasonable legal fees through fixed price packages. Our clients work directly with seasoned attorneys through our hands-on legal services model. We integrate a robust technology platform to create a client-centric experience that is collaborative, efficient, and transparent. For more information, please visit us at www.next.law. Next company this morning is Carousel Bio. Carousel Bio is developing novel peptide small proteins with nanoparticle delivery to more safely and effectively treat inflammatory diseases. Their lead is to prevent the formation of scars after operation. Presenting today is the founder and CEO, Dr. Mike Davies. Thanks very much, Larry. That was uh, very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Mike Davies, as Larry said. We're developing novel peptides to prevent the formation of a scar after an operation. Um, as you may know, there is absolutely nothing at the moment that prevents the formation of a scar after an operation. Currently, $37 billion are spent each year to treat existing scars, and nothing really works. Things such as pressure garments, high pressure water for some reason, um, creams, ointments, oils, steroid creams, nothing works. We're developing a new steroid-free formulation that will be safe and prevent the formation of a scar. The solution here is inflammation. Inflammation is responsible for the formation of a scar. It leads to the collagen deposition. It leads to the formation of a scar. We're targeting the orchestrator of inflammation but with these peptides. We use a nanoparticle delivery to take the peptides into cells, as you can see, in this middle picture, and what's key is we bind at a very different site on the enzyme that causes the inflammation. We bind at an allosteric site. So by reducing the inflammation, we can reduce the collagen deposition and pre prevent the formation of the scar after an operation. This will become a spray formulation that the surgeon will use at the close of the operation. So opening the skin, do the operation, after suturing, closing the skin afterwards, the surgeon will spray down the wound. This will deliver the nanoparticles, which will deliver the peptide, which will switch off the inflammation, which will reduce the collagen deposition and reduce the formation of a scar. It will be used once a day for up to a week after the operation. As I've said, it's a $37 billion market, and there were 234 million operations worldwide in 2019 alone. Every one of those would have got a scar 
we could work in every single one of them. There's nothing under that prevents the formation of a scar and everybody gets a scar after an operation. We've got patents in the US, in Europe and Japan, and we've got patents pending in China. We have conducted important cellular studies that have demonstrated that we can not only switch off inflammation, we can prevent the activation of inflammation. And we're doing some important human tissue studies by taking biopsies from people who've been burned, putting our formulation on, and showing that we can switch off the inflammation because it's known that that inflammation leads to scarring. Big Pharma, J and J, um, um, AstraZeneca, the Alderma are very excited with what we're doing, but we need your help to get it there. We've got a great team. Uh, myself, I'm Mike Davis, founder and CEO. I have a surgical background. I was a pediatric cardiac surgeon at Great Ormond Street in London. John Nicholson is our chairman. Uh, from Cambridge, and Anne McKee is our chief financial officer. We've developed drugs that are already on the market. We've taken drugs to exit. We've got over 55 years of pharmaceutical experience, and we've raised over $200 million. We're seeking $3 million over this next year. This is how it fits in the investment strategy to get us to clinical proof of concept where we see the big payout in drugs. We've raised so far 1.5 million, that's with Innovate UK grants and with some seed investment from Deep Root Capital, who have said that they will contribute to this next investment. And we have also put in some money myself. We're seeking 3 million in which to develop the formulation and do a, a SCAR proof of concept study. Thank you very much. These are my contact details and hope to see you in the breakout room afterwards. Thank, thanks very much, Mike. The next company that I have the honor of introducing is DapTech Inc. DapTech is a fintech B2B SaaS solution for project costing. costing. SMBs still use spreadsheets and accounting staff to track projects. DapTech intelligently connects the tools they use for accounting, time tracking, and payroll for accurate real-time project costing. Presenting for DapTech is Jim Keeney, the CEO. Jim? Thank you, Larry. Let's be honest. If you're a small or medium-sized business trying to do project costing, payroll is your obstacle. The problem is that hours go into payroll, and what comes out is just the pay. You then have to resort to spreadsheet magic to try and allocate things back to projects. That's where DAP comes in. We intelligently connect everything, simplify the payroll process, and deliver reliable, accurate project costing. As companies grow, project costing becomes critical. There's just too much going on for one person to keep track of. Many companies still do this using spreadsheets and manual labor. And alternatives such as all-in-one ERPs and job costing solutions, well, they're expensive, they're complex, and they force companies to adopt to their software business model, not the other way around. DAP solves project costing by connecting the best in breed services that companies already use for accounting, time tracking, and payroll. Once connected, the data flows through DAP, and DAP masters the custom business logic that makes every business unique. The result is intelligent project costing, tailored to each company. As I said, each company is unique. They have their own way of describing the work that they do and their own rules for paying their employees. DAP recognizes these patterns and sets logic into software components that we can then reuse. Thus, with each new customer, DAP learns more about project costing and reuses the knowledge for future customers. So it's simple. The company picks the vendors they prefer and DAP intelligently connects them. As part of the process, we implement the company's specific business rules and deliver accurate project costing. And as a bonus, we save them around seven hours per payroll. There are 325,000 small to medium-sized project-based businesses in the US. DAP's annual uh, revenue per customer averages about 3,500. That results in a total addressable market of $1.1 billion. In our first year, DAP's growth has been steady. And then in September, our primary partner 
began sending us 40 leads per month, and our conversion rate is about 25%. That allowed us to finish the year strong, and we now have 67 customers. This has led to excellent financial growth. We finished 2021 with $171,000 in revenue, and we expect to grow that to over half a million in 2022. To put this in perspective, we only need 300 customers to achieve $1 million in annual recurring revenue. So DAP started as a side hustle two years ago when I was running Fitter Web Consultant. But when it proved itself out, I brought Dan on board and we launched in January of last year. We grew throughout last year and we now have eight employees and a great team of advisors with deep industry knowledge. Together, we participated in eight exits and raised over $79 million. To date, I've invested $300,000 and we've raised an additional $150,000 in a friends and family round. We're now opening a round to raise $1.25 million. We're going to use that to expand the intelligence of the platform, add additional partnerships, and expand our marketing channels, sales and marketing channels. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you in the breakout room where I'll show you the rest of the slides from the presentation. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Jim. I think we're going to try to loop back now to Larry. Brian I actually Seals. think that they, they don't have connections. So we are going to, we're going to do the next investor poll. Um, and Outwork Systems will give their presentation in their breakout room as well as DAP because I know that they had some issues with the screen share. Um, but we are going to launch our investor poll um, for these three companies. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, this is for investors only. So obviously you didn't see at work, but those of you who know them, they have presented a few times in the past. So if you want more information on them, let us know. And they will um, be willing to do their whole presentation, their four minute pitch in the, in the, um, in their breakout room. And then, we have Carousel Bio, obviously, and then DAPT. And I think most of you, or some of you who've uh, been on previously may have seen Jim present as well. So Jim, congrats on a great update. Um, and again, this is just for investors, please. And uh, we will make sure, we're not gonna publish the results of the poll, but we will make sure that um, the presenting companies have our investors' name and contact info so that they can follow up. And just as a reminder, uh, we are going to breakout rooms after the 10th presenter, so we have seven more to go. And um, during that period of time, you'll be able to go in and out of whatever breakout rooms you like and talk to the companies directly. So thank you guys for participating in the poll. Uh, last, well, we still have some votes coming in, so thank you. Um, we'll take down the poll in a few seconds, but uh, okay, thanks, Guy. And we'll turn it over, back over to Larry. Larry. Okay, great. The next company I have the privilege of introducing is Free Sleeve. Free Sleeve is a leading branded health and wellness product company focused on delivering cold therapy solutions for pain and recovery. The company was founded in 2015 by Mike Reardon to initially develop a product for his daughter who has experienced significant knee pain while training in a pre-Olympic gymnastics program. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mike uh, Reardon to present. Mike. Hi, I'm the inventor and founder of Free Sleeve, a revolutionary cold therapy compression sleeve I developed for my daughter, Elizabeth, who at the time was eight years old and a highly competitive gymnast. And much like her, after her long gymnastics career, she suffered mo multiple aches and pains, as well as some after surgery inflammation. And so I decided to develop a product to help out not only somebody of her age and stature, but all of us who might be weekend warriors or potentially suffering some, from some of the same aches and pains that she did. So I developed a free sleeve. What is it? It's a simple, safe, effective, comfortable, 360 degrees cold therapy compression sleeve that is easily administered, simple, and gives you 20 minutes of, of the doctor recommended cold therapy per application, and you're fully mobile while wearing it. What's a cold therapy market? Well, in global cold therapy, it's about a $1.6 billion market with a CAGR of 4.9%. We expect in 2025, the market to grow to $2 billion. The United States accounts for about 61% of this market. 
Do we have competition? Sure, there are some competitors out there. But is there anything like Free Sleep, a fully comfortable, safe, and effective, easily applicable product? With Free Sleep, it's as simple as pulling it out of the freezer and sleeping it on whatever joint may ail you. Freeze it, sleep it, relieve it. So what are we doing currently? Well, we have great direct to consumer through Amazon and our Shopify platform, but really our growth initiatives for 2022 and beyond are what sets us apart. We're launching QVC in 2022. We have a change in our manufacturing to, to actually eliminate two thirds of our manufacturing costs, which will increase profitability. We're opening up international distribution. We have over 100,000 units verbally committed. We're partnering with a leading recovery brand, KT Tape, to launch in over 60,000 domestic retail doors and new products we developed like the shoulder, which you see here in a picture, to launch in Q2 of 2022. Who are Team Free Sleeve? Well, myself, I'm the founder and inventor. Billy Harper, my CFO, is a Wake Forest grad, worked with Bank of America and had a wonderful, successful exit with Capstone Logistics. Jonathan Kerner, who's an NBA player, played for the New York Knicks and the Orlando Magic. And Les Cross, who's the chairman of DJO Global, the largest durable medical company in the world, as well as now currently the, the CEO of Solana Global. Uh, between the, the four of us, we've had three successful exits, raised over $200 million in capital, and with exit valuations of over $2 billion. So what do we look like right now financially? Well, the good news is in 2021, even after COVID, we've always stayed positive revenue, but this year will become positive EBITDA. With up, uh, up revenues right now projected of $4.4 million and scaling to 2025 of over $17 Point eight million dollars. What we've done so far is raised about five point five million, split between equity and debt. Our ask right now is one million dollars in preferred Series A units. We're going to use this cap to fund our existing operation until we're positive EBITDA in Q2. We have international purchase orders that we have to fund up front, and then again, new product development. So I really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. And we're looking forward to hearing from you guys in the breakout room. Have a great day. Thanks, Mike. The next company I have the honor to introduce is Gander Technologies. Gander's AI-driven facial recognition timekeeping system prevents time theft, which creates an average annual savings of more than $2,400 per employee and protects customers against hour and wage litigation exposure. Their solution leapfrogs traditional timekeeping options in a number of ways. To tell us more about it is Bill Henry, the company's CEO. Bill? Great. Thank you, Larry. Good morning. I'm Bill Henry. Gander solves business challenges using our AI-driven facial recognition technology platform. Our group has had six successful exits worth more than $4.6 billion dollars. We've created a unicorn that was sold for more than $3 billion, and we've raised more than $1 billion in debt and equity to help the companies we've built through our, our careers. So Tan is our CTO. He's based in Vietnam with our development team. And Afshin is a key investor and board member who is instrumental in our growth. When we came together, I mean, the real focus of Gander is we came together to solve a, a really exciting business problem. And that problem is really time theft. And in America, $400 billion is lost every year due to time theft. And according to Forbes, the average employee is stealing about four and a half hours a week from their employer. So this is through buddy punching or basically being paid for work that wasn't performed. And in addition, a huge growing area is meal and rest break compliance challenges. And so the wage and hour litigation exposure is in excess of $5,000 per employee per year. And since there's a four-year statute of limitations, companies face more than $20,000 of exposure if they can't prove that employees took their required meal and rest breaks. So let's talk about our solution. We enable employees to clock in and out using iOS and Android mobile applications. This could be on their mobile phone or could be running on a company provided tablet. Facial recognitions performed on our Amazon platform 
And basically for each event, whether it's a clock in or clock out or the start of a rest break, we're capturing the employee's photo, confirming it's them. We're capturing the location and then also the timestamp of the event. We also provide configurable work smart triggers that let employers push reminders to their employees on the schedule they set to make sure they stay in compliance. If you look at how Gander stands apart in the market, it's really the three big differentiators. The facial recognition platform running on a global, or on a, excuse me, on a mobile device, either iOS or Android. It's capturing that geofence location, and then it's the compliance piece with the WorkSmart automation protecting employers from that compliance litigation. We're also building out an access control product that can fit seamlessly into the timekeeping or be used as a standalone product. No other companies out there offer the Gander solution and the comprehensive set of capabilities that we do. So let's talk about the market that we play in. You know, there's two big, fast growing markets. So the first one's facial recognition. That market, you see the stats here, you know, in 2022, it's projected to be $5.2 billion. The HR solutions market is projected to be $22 billion this year. We launched our timekeeping and compliance solution earlier this month. We have our first customers. And right now, we're driving aggressive revenue growth. That's the focus over the next five years. We're looking to reach a $16 million ARR figure in 2026. And it's a quick summary here. We've raised $400,000 to get our products to where they are today. The next piece here is we're looking to raise a $500,000 round of seed investment. We're at a $4.7 million valuation. And the proceeds are really to scale the business, particularly sales and marketing to help us continue to drive customer acquisition. So thank you for your time. We're really excited about the business we're building and we'd love you to participate. We look forward to seeing you in the breakout room and the Zoom calls that we've got scheduled next week. Thanks very much. Great, thank you so much, Bill, good job. Um, now I'd like to introduce Larry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'd like to introduce Andy Tucker, who is a partner with Nelson Mullins, and Andy is a longtime friend, a great guy, he's a longtime supporter of Connectpreneur, and he will tell you a little bit about himself and his firm. Andy will introduce our next five presenters, and we will have AdWorks present at the very end, uh, be a four-minute pitch by Brian. I think he's connected again. So um, after our last presenter, we will do a final investor poll and then go into breakout rooms. So uh, with that, I'd like to welcome Andy. Andy, welcome, and thank you so much for your sponsorship and continued support. Thank you, Tien. Uh, thank you, Skylar. It's a pleasure to be here. Nelson Mullins is a 900 lawyer, full service firm headquartered in the southeastern United States, but now with offices throughout the country. Uh, we are typically ranked one or two in the southeast every quarter in the United States in venture capital and emerging company transactional work. I'm one of the partners in that practice in the mid Atlantic region. Um, we're, as Ken said, we're thrilled to be part of Connectpreneur. I've been sponsoring Connectpreneur on and off for, I don't know, Tim, what, six, seven, six years or so? Long time. Um, Thank you. Yes. And, um, you know, we're pleased to be back as back here again. Um, my background, I've been working in venture capital for about 25 years, helping companies go from formation to IPO. We are a full service firm. We offer services on a fixed and hourly rate basis, whatever is more efficient for our clients and have significant experience in helping them grow from where they are today to where they want to be in the future. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our, our next company in medics. In medics is a um, clinic has the only clinically validated FDA clear diagnostic solving poor outcomes and unsustainable costs for autoimmune disease, which is the most expensive part of healthcare. And I'm pleased to introduce Andrew Holman, CEO and founder of InMedics. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate it. I've got my timer on. Um, 
So I had to come out of Zoom. Uh, I don't know if anybody else noticed, but uh, Zoom was crashing uh, during that last uh, presentation. So I'm Dr. Andrew Holman. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Seattle and based in Medics. We're putting a diagnostic in doctor's offices to answer a very fundamental question, uh, a big question. Why patients respond differently to the same treatment? Uh, it's about stress. It's about the very bad, nasty nature of science and stress. This is your brain stem is your fight or flight response. This is not the warm and fuzzy nature of stress. Um, this is um, a challenge because we've never had a way to precisely measure it. But that measurement exists. And it's used to win World Cups and Super Bowl titles. It's an advanced form of something called heart rate variability. And it's light years, light years ahead of what you may be familiar with on Apple, uh, Fitbit, Zoom, and Aura Ring. We had, we we're starting in rheumatology. It's a five-minute test out of the doctor's office. The, the uh, information on ECG goes to the cloud while the data is stored, and in 10 seconds, the algorithms uh, shoot back down to me actual measures of this part of your neuroanatomy. One of the most important distinguishing factors <laughs> compared to other uh, offerings here is we have data. Nine published studies, a prospective double-blind study showing this really works to predict the outcome in rheumatoid arthritis, and we've enabled how to triple, triple the remission rate in rheumatoid arthritis. Right now, it's 25%. We take it to 79%. It's a SAS play. This is a very usual for medicine. Um, this is the first SAS diagnostic of the kind. It has two recurring revenue streams. One is the uh, lease per year, about five, about $5,000. The doctor can pay for that in about uh, two weeks based on current codes that already exist for this. And the other is uh, we have centralized data uh, for, uh, for our pharma customers, and we get paid per test just like the doctor does. It's a very large total addressable market because stress affects everyone everywhere. In rheumatology alone, where we're starting, it's about $3 billion, but it goes up to about $85 billion when you look at this impact uh, through medicine. We're LabCorp without any employees, without a lab, without any blood. We have 90% uh, margins and includes customer acquisition. I'll to explain that to you. And why we're going to reach 250 million revenue within, uh, by 2025. Um, we have a tremendous amount of traction. We have patents, exclusive license, trade secrets. The reimbursement model is already done. The Medicare rates for HRV went up this year, so the doctor gets $100 every time they do this five-minute test. We get $80 every time they do the test. We've done independent market adoption. 231 rheumatologists surveyed in the United States over the last four months. 96% want this in their office on day one, and we're going to the FDA next month with our person. It's a very experienced team here particularly not in diagnostics, but rheumatology diagnostics, 60 year plus cumulative experience led by Bernie Tobin, former president of Crescendo Bioscience. He had a 30% compound annual growth rate over his five years there. In medics has already sold patents for $10 million. We've had an exit for 30X already. This team has already done successful IPOs and major acquisitions. We've had 7 million of funding to date. I am very proud to say that I put in 2.75 million cash myself. I've led this particular round because I like what I see. Uh, it is a $3 million preferred equity round with warrants. Most of them are stacked at the beginning. There's still room for people to get in at 30% warrants. It's a $28 million pre-money valuation. It's to fund the FDA milestones. These are significant inflection points. FDA pre-submission meeting. FDA 510K submission is a non-risk class two diagnostic and predicate and commercialization and launch in the Pacific Northwest all the next 12 months. So I want to thank you very much. I hope you'll come to our breakout session so I can really explain a lot of this and particularly why this is so important to a doctor, equally important to the, to the way you use a cell phone. We have to have this metric of measuring stress to be able to take care of patients. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, Andrew. I uh, look forward to seeing you in the breakout, in your breakout room. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce Pomostix. Pomostix is a leader in the emerging field of medical breath analysis. They have developed a, an analysis to detect breast cancer at an early stage from just the air that you breathe. Um, it is the most common cancer diagnosis. 12% of all cancer diagnoses was breast cancer. 
and most deaths result from the fact that it's not diagnosed early enough. I'd like to introduce William Whitmire, the CEO of Pulmostix, to present to us today. Thank you. We all know women who've been affected by breast cancer. Our wives, our mothers, our daughters, our sisters are frequently diagnosed with this disease. One woman in eight is going to be diagnosed with breast cancer in the course of her lifetime. Mm -hmm. Breast cancers are detected too late. As mentioned, breast cancer is the most frequently diagnosed cancer today. 70% of all cancer cases are diagnosed at stage three or later. Breast cancer is the leading cause of cancer death among women. The mammogram is a gold standard for breast cancer screening. Too many women, far too many women avoid being screened because it is both invasive and painful. Many other women are unable to get to an imaging center. BreastSense 1000 is a non-invasive, painless, real-time, point-of-care patient screening platform. One breath, that's all it takes. The woman exhales into a disposable breath capture device. The breath sample is drawn into the instrument. And in less than five minutes, she and her doctor have a result indicating the presence or absence of breast cancer. This is a substantial, large, untapped market. There are 1.1 billion women in the age group that should be being screened for breast cancer. Most of these women are not being screened. This is our opportunity to address this problem one woman at a time. There's competition in this sector, but we are the only company looking at breath analysis to screen for breast cancer. Our team has over 150 years of aggregated experience, six exits, $50 million raised, and over a billion dollars in acquisitions. We're projecting the regulatory approvals at the end of this year, an initial commercialization next year, building to $150 million in sales by 2026. We've raised $6 million. We are raising $3 million in this round, and the applications are gonna be for breast cancer algorithm optimization, regulatory approvals, and go to market. I want to thank you for your time. Look forward to speaking to you in the breakout room. Terrific. Thank you, Bill. Good job. Um, at this moment, we would like to put up our second investor poll, and that is for our the last four presenters. So Free Sleeve, which is a um, leading branded health and wellness product company focused on delivering cold therapy solutions. We have Gander, AI-driven facial recognition, timekeeping system to prevent theft and um, to keep agents and employees more productive. And then we had uh, in medics, next gen, a technology company and our, uh, our final presenter. So let, I see, uh, okay, poll results are still coming in. I just wanna let everyone know that um, after our 10th presenter, we'll have at works go um, they are in a, in a secure place now. And then after that, we'll do our final investor poll and then we'll go into breakout rooms. And again, you'll have a chance to talk directly with each presenter at, uh, during the breakout rooms. You'll be able to go in and out of whatever breakout rooms you want. We'll have 10 rooms, one for each presenter. So uh, with that, I think we can take down the poll. Thank you for participating. And um, Andy, take it away. we got three more. Um, our pleasure to introduce our, our next presenting company, Russell Tuckman, the CEO of Rebuildy. Rebuildy is a for-profit disaster recovery platform to aid individuals and families in rebuilding their homes after a disaster. Uh, Russell, will you take it away? Thanks, Andy. Hi, everyone. My name is Russell Tuckman, and I'm here to talk to you about Rebuildy. 
So Rebuildy is a for-profit disaster recovery platform and app to aid individuals and families in rebuilding their homes after a natural disaster. Now, while this deck is dense because tackling such a significant issue requires that we make sure we've dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's in regards to strategy, vision, and execution, um, please note that we have additional materials and are ready to answer any and all questions to provide in-depth explanations of everything you see more. So what is our mission? Well, according to the current administrator of FEMA, the effects of disasters that we're seeing from climate change are the crisis of our generation, and this is going to be our new normal. So our mission is to fill a gap in the disaster recovery process by offering a more efficient and more effective substitute to the federal aid process of disseminating aid to those in need. This business is personal to our entire team. Now, disaster recovery is currently an inefficient, confusing, and cumbersome process. As you can see, there's really two main options people can employ, and each route poses its own set of challenges. Rebuildy is an efficient solution to these problems. So how does it work? Well, our three-sided marketplace of requesters, donors, and suppliers acts as a stopgap measure in between the aftermath of a disaster and the completion of the insurance process. Additionally, it functions as a gift registry-like disaster recovery service where donations are earmarked for specific items and services for someone to rebuild their home. Now, we wanted to briefly show you how our platform works for both requesters and donors. Our MVP is in development and we'll have a non-coded video demo of it to share soon. Now, it's widely known that this bureaucratic process has a significant amount of challenges and our primary goal is to provide help for the underinsured and the uninsured who have the most amount of challenges, essentially our initial users. The rate, cost, and risk of disasters is increasing year over year and the effects, especially on those in communities of color, low education, or low income can be devastating. Purpose and profit should go hand in hand. In terms of the market opportunity, there are over 106 million people in the United States living in designated disaster areas, and there's also been over 600 billion in disaster-related costs over the last five years. Additionally, the expected market size forecast by 2026 for emergency management software is 120 billion. As for the business model, Rebuildy's revenue will build upon and result from subsequent platform versions and milestones. It'll first be generated by a marketplace admin processing fee for donors, followed by a recurring supplier subscription fee and a data selling model. Each version of Rebuildy builds upon the previous. Also, it's important to note that people in need will never have to pay a dime to receive aid through our platform. In terms of our strategic and product roadmap goals, product roadmaps and goals, we worked alongside our advisors and mentors to make sure we have a solid growth and execution strategy on all important fronts. And we're excited to share this with those who connect with us after. Along with my co-founders, Michael Pollinger and Adrian Baker-Kang, we have an experienced and well-connected team of serial entrepreneurs, along with subject matter experts and advisors to guide us. Additionally, we're positioning ourselves to become a market network, which combines the best elements of marketplaces and networks with SaaS workflow tools. We're not trying to recreate the wheel here. Rather, we're trying to create a more efficient wheel, utilizing and combining successful spokes that have been previously employed by related companies. As Georgetown MBA candidates graduating this May, we're utilizing the resources that are available to us in order to grow and execute this business, including winning a few grants and competitions thus far. Additionally, we're finalizing a partnership with a consulting firm called Epicenter Innovation, which focuses on helping emergency management technology companies grow and scale through initial user acquisition, marketing and sales, platform development, and more. Now, in terms of investment, Rebuildy is currently pre-revenue, and we're raising a $250,000 pre-seed round for our initial operations, platform development, and customer acquisition plans. The larger seed raise will come later in the year once we have platform traction, but for now, we're really seeking investors of any type for the pre-seed round who truly believe in our purpose, vision, and our team, and will provide experience and guidance along with capital. We've mapped out and detailed our initial overall expenses and revenue assumptions as the company grows and scales, which we're happy to discuss. Finally, what about product market fit? Well, through our surveys and research, we clearly see that there's not only a real need for this type of platform for people in need, but also a growing market. We truly believe we can provide an efficient alternative for those in need after a natural or unnatural disaster. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Please reach out to us after with any questions. Thank you, Russell, for that presentation. I look forward to seeing you in your breakout room. It's, it's now my pleasure to introduce Real Coders. Um, Real Coders solves a problem that I'm sure many of us in the, soft, in the services business are presenting and that it's impossible to hire people today uh, it's much easier to teach them the skills. AI, uh, Real Coders provides a unique AI-based assessment and skill building software to allow companies to train and build their workforce uh, to the needs of today. It's my pleasure to introduce Ravi Singh, the CEO of 
are real coders. Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Real Coders is focused on making talent management easy for small medium businesses. We had tremendous success in building talent pipeline for Fortune 100 companies, and we have applied all of our learnings to build end-to-end -end talent management solution for SMBs. SMBs are facing three major challenges. Finding right people, because cost of bad hiring is huge. Keeping the employees productive due to changes in technologies and business in environment, and lack of having a upskilling and reskilling opportunity. Uh, and uh, fragmented solutions where like they, SMBs have to integrate and, and maintain integrations across multiple tools. RC Team Builder, uh, our unique software, provides a solution. It helps clients find the right employee by using AI-based skill match uh, analysis and skill assessment, uh, provides personalized upskilling based on employees' performance, skill assessment results, and job requirements. So it maps it based on the job requirements, so it gives the em employee only to focus on things which they need most. Uh, provides complete HR at CM functionality, and it is end-to-end uh, -end solution with HR plus a skill assessment plus uh, upskilling. The market opportunity is huge. Transition to hybrid workforce is pushing the need for remote learning and simple way to interact, engage, and manage employees. Just the learning management industry alone is expected to grow to 37.9 billion by 2026. 59% uh, of HR leaders consider critical skill building the top priority in 22. Uh, Gartner, Gartner finding basically validated our focus and it is looking very exciting for us. We do have competition. Uh, but none of, of our competitors provide end-to-end -end solution for SMBs. Uh, they don't have HR, uh, comprehensive skill assessment, plus personalized upskilling and reskilling to develop employees together. Um, we are seeing great traction. Uh, we, uh, we launched it last month, and we already have one large company uh, successfully completed trial, including performance and scalability testing, contract is pending signature. Uh, two universities are conducting trials to get their student uh, uh, in industry ready using our unique assessment and skill building capabilities. Uh, we, have a, we have a strong team and we have a team which can take it to the next level. Uh, we collectively had uh, six exits, 65 years of technology and leadership experience, and we have a senior director from Google as our advisor. Our uh, financials uh, this year, we are looking to generate 1.1 million in revenue this year and uh, expectation to grow to 89 million by 2025. We're looking for uh, $2 million investment and uh, we are going to focus that on sales, marketing and uh, product roadmap. Thank you for listening. We believe RC Team Builder will transform the talent management space for SMBs. And uh, Mark and I will be happy to uh, see you in the breakout room. Thank you. Ravi, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, next up is SST Wireless. Um, please introduce the CEO of SST, Christopher Chong. Um, SST has removed the barriers to IoT adoption by developing a robust line of industrial grade wireless plug and play sensors and gateways to allow small and medium sized businesses to generate the business, the benefits of IOT technology. Uh, Christopher, please take it away. Thanks, Andy. Hi, everyone. So we are solving a number of challenges that are in the industrial space. It's something probably not uh, that familiar with you, but hope uh, this will be interesting for you. Uh, we basically deliver tangible solutions that affect people's lives every day. So we started off making sensors that are wireless to handle certain problems in the industrial IoT market. But we found that there's a greater problem with small and medium-sized companies. What you see on the screen is basically what a typical industrial automation PLC network system looks like. Very complicated, 
very expensive, and the data part is just confusing to figure out. And this is why the adoption level is so slow and so low. And so we created a solution which is called Industrial IT for Everyone. We made it simple. This is a municipal water pump that is monitoring vibration and temperature by just sticking a sensor on and everything happens. We've simplified the, the cost and procurement structure and we made the data part accessible. And we've gone beyond that. We're actually aggregating data with our customers to create the big data that they need to do machine learning and so on. Massive marketplace, wireless is also growing at almost 25% compound at annual rate. Now, what I want to do is give you a quick example of how we solve solutions. This is fleet management for a company called New Flyer, largest bus manufacturer in North America. We are the only approved technology that monitors tires on these buses. And these are a bunch of uh, Detroit buses we just delivered. If you look at sawmills, they have lots of problems with water that they use. We've been able to solve a problem where we're reducing water usage by 66%. That saves money, saves the environment, and everyone is quite happy. Here, we're preventing fires from happening on machines that are making these wood pellets and, and feed pellets and so on. And this company, one of the largest in the world, Drax, is counting on us basically to keep their employees safe and to make sure that no, no problems emerge with their machines. We're now going after 10,000 municipalities in the U.S., which are small, underprivileged, rural, that are facing, well, lack of resources, um, lack of people, and aging equipment. And we're helping them monitor and make sure that they can supply water and sewer services to their citizens by maintaining the equipment. So we started off as an OEM. So our sense was going to other people's machines and vehicles. We started working with enterprise customers to validate and, and increase credibility. And now we're at the third stage, which is to make this available to a wider audience. And this is where we need your help. We have a great team. We've had several exits and turnarounds, but we can talk more about that in the breakout. Um, with COVID, now kind of coming to an end and global supply chains improving, we expect that we will see an accelerated growth this year. And this is based on our current projections, about $3.5 million this year. And as you can see over the time, over the next several years, our SaaS part is going to increase as more people adopt the technologies that we offer. So we have a great line of products that solve a number of different problems so we can upsell and cross-sell. A growing list of marquee customers who are standing behind our technology. And this is not easy. Industrial customers are not someone who's going to switch things very quickly. They're slow to adopt, but once they do, they stick with you. Our platform on AWS is actually something very cool, and I can show you that in the breakout session. And we have some really fun projects coming up, including one with Walt Disney World, where we're putting our sensors on different rides. Oops, what happened there? I think I somehow lost the thing. Oh, there you go. Um, so we are at 1.75 million US um, Series A. We have $440,000 left. There's two ways to invest. You can do directly with us at a certain minimum. And now one of the VCs we've been working with has set up an SPV. So you can join that SPV if you prefer to do it that way in terms of your investment. And as you can see, we've gotten a lot of uh, interesting uh, press coverage, which I can share with you. But more importantly, if you're interested in what this whole industrial IoT thing is about and why it's the fastest growing segment of all internet use and so on, uh, please join me in the breakout session and we can talk more about that. And once again, thank you for your time and look forward to seeing you soon. Great, thank you so much, Chris, and congrats on your continued success. Uh, we have, um, we're gonna have At Works go after this third poll. We're gonna put up our third investor poll for our last three presenters, so Real Coders, Rebuild the and SST wireless. So this is for investors only. So any investors who are interested in um, getting to know these these presenters more or investing, please indicate as such. And we will not publish these uh, polls. We will share the contact info with the presenting companies, and then they can follow up. And as a re reminder, after at works goes, we'll do a second sponsor poll. After which we'll open up the breakout rooms. We have ten breakout rooms one for each presenting company. And then at that point, you can um, ask more questions and go deeper. Um, so I still see indications of interest coming in. So we'll keep the poll up still, Sky, for, let's do it for another 20 seconds. So anyone else who's interested in learning more about Real Coders, Rebuildy, or SST Wireless, please, uh, please indicate as such. And um, in the meantime, okay, I still see some stuff coming okay we can uh okay last call for investor polls okay so we're gonna have brian from at work systems uh present now 
after Brian is done, we'll do our second investor poll and then we'll open the breakout room. So Brian, welcome. Dan, thank you. So CyberPlan is a cyber platform for the SMB government contractor developed by Atwork Systems. In October of 2020, the DOD announced a new role requiring all contractors to comply with complex cybersecurity standards by the end of 2025. These SMBs must adhere to these new regulations in order to continue their business with the DOD client base. The problem, they lack the knowledge, skills, and tools to complete this daunting task. CyberPlan is a comprehensive cybersecurity SaaS platform that enables firms to manage their complete life cycle of their cybersecurity program. It provides businesses with the tools to establish a program, but also to maintain it and control costs from start to finish. Some of the built-in features of this life cycle solution are an extensive knowledge base of policy and solutions, integrated program management to help predict cost, continuous monitoring of the program's readiness, workflows that enable all parties involved to collaborate within a single platform all at an affordable price for the SMB contractor. The addressable market is projected to be at just over 60 billion by 2026. We are targeting the group of SMB contractors with an estimated market value of around $9 billion. The market is big and the opportunity is tremendous in cybersecurity. <clears throat> there are other platforms on the market, but they stop at performing an assessment where we manage the solution. We provide the people, process, and platform to achieve and maintain compliance. It's a full life cycle solution for the SMB contractor. We have a finished product launched in July, 2021. We performed a fit gap analysis and have completed beta testing with three clients. We are now ready to take the product to prime time. Our leadership team consists of veterans in the defense contract and cybersecurity space with experience building and exiting firms and over 85 years of combined industrial experience. We have the right team with the experience required to execute with four exits and a total raise of $365 million. With this new rule, a must have to do business with the federal government, we see a market adoption over the next three to five years that supports our sales projections. We are entering the market at the right time with a complete solution. Our projected sales forecast has us increasing year over year, the three-year goal of 7 million and a five-year projection of just over 30 million. We plan to achieve those sales with partner fees, direct sales, and additional services. We are seeking $500,000 investment from the right investor to be utilized for sales and marketing, product enhancements, and production expansion. We have two deep dive sessions scheduled for next week. Details will be provided at our breakout session. Thank you everyone for the time. Sorry for the glitch earlier. I look forward to seeing you in the breakout room. You don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Great. Thank you so much, Brian. And I appreciate that. We, uh, we obviously had you guys listed on the first poll. You actually had quite a few people interested. So anyone interested in investing, just uh, send Brian a private chat because we don't have the ability to poll that separately. And now we'll put up our second and final sponsor poll. So this is for anyone who joined late. Um, if you're looking for services, uh, from any of our awesome sponsors. We like to generate leads for them. This is really important for them. It's important for us because they're the ones that are keeping these events free for everybody. And um, so anyone looking for marketing or branding services, uh, legal services for startup, legal services for corporate, um, if you're seeking application uh, development and software services, digital transformation, we have a modus create, obviously, you heard from Pat earlier. Anyone look for accounting or tax services or wealth management, um, insurance, and also if you are an investor interested to be uh, put on our distribution list, we do have a number of private events. We do one private event a week for clients who are uh, raising capital, and uh, we're happy to put you on that list. And also anyone who wants to be a sponsor or to present at one of our future events. Um, 
Sky, let's keep that open for a few more seconds. I do want to say before we open the breakout rooms, and again, we have 10 breakout rooms, one for each presenting company. Um, you know, please keep in mind these are for our for our presenting companies and for you to ask more, more questions and to exchange contact information. Um, but also, before you do that, please download the chat history right now because when you go into the breakout rooms, and sometimes you lose your chat history. And for sure, before you leave the meeting, download your chat history because we have several hundred messages in there which you can download and read later. Just click on chat and then it's on the toolbar at the bottom and then you'll see a little square in the bottom right corner with three dots. Click on that square with three dots and hit save. And then when you exit the uh, meeting, it will pop up for you. Um, so with that, I think uh, I'd like to open up the breakout rooms. You guys are free to go to whichever rooms you'd like and uh, we'll keep the everything open until around one o'clock. So again, thank you guys for joining us today. Remember March 31st is our next Connectpreneur Rocket Pitch. And, um, you know, we'll see you, uh, we'll see you shortly. So thank you so much for your participation today.